This is Newsmax TV. I'm Ashley Martella. We're joined here in our studio by Dinesh D'Souza. He's a New York Times best-selling author. He's the president of the King's College in New York City. New York Times Magazine named him one of America's most influential conservative thinkers. His new book is entitled The Roots of Obama's Rage. Welcome to Newsmax, Dinesh. Good to be on the show. Let's explore the title of your book. In a nutshell, you say, what motivates Obama is profound rage inherited from his African father, whom he never even knew. Uh, his father abandoned his mother after Obama was born. Specifically, what rage? Well, first of all, the rage in the father was very direct. The uh, father would sit outside his hut in Kenya. He would be completely drunk. He would scream and rage and foam at the mouth, attack the West and America for denying him his anti-colonial ambitions. For Obama, the rage, in my view, is sublimated. It's the rage, remember the guy in the Schwarzenegger movie who comes back, his family has been massacred. He realizes that some really bad guys did this, and so he realizes he's got to be really calm in, in order to take them on. So with Obama, I think he has a strategy. He has an anger, but it's, it's, under, it's put under control. Uh, and, um, uh, and yet it continues to drive his policies. What does Obama's end goal for America look like? In my view, it is for America no longer to be number one. It seems a little weird because I, I, don't, I think this is not something I would say about Democrats in general. I think if you told Bill Clinton, are you trying to make America not be number one, he would be outraged. Uh, but with Obama, I think he thinks it is good for America to be a more normal country, not dominating the UN, but just one other guy at the table. Uh, Obama, I think, would like America to be like Greece or like Finland, just another country participating in the sort of parliament of nations. Uh, so I, we were in a strange situation. Here's America in a fight for its life to stay at the top of the world. Remember, we've only been the world's sole superpower for 20 years since the collapse of the Soviet Union. We have, our tenure at the top is the shortest lived of any empire in world history. Uh, and it's a little bit chilling for me to think of our commander in chief trying to take us down from that position. The federal court in Pensacola, Florida just handed Obama a major setback for what was considered his crown jewel accomplishment. Obamacare, the reform of health care. Now, knowing Obama's thinking the way you do, is he going to be willing now to work with Republicans to change the law? Well, I think uh, the health care law is, is really important to Obama. It's the biggest federal, new federal program that we've seen since the 1960s. And, uh, and I think for Obama, it's an issue not merely of um, changing the way health care is organized, but bringing a major sector of uh, the private of private enterprise under the rod of government control uh, that's part of his agenda and he wants to do that to the banks the insurance companies the pharmaceutical companies the oil companies so it's part of a larger agenda so I think it's very disturbing to him that this is now the second legal setback mm -hmm. for health care mm -hmm. Uh, I think Obama's going to fight really hard to try to get that overturned. It may force him to make some compromises, although, like he said, he's going to try to make minimal changes, um, certainly in the degree of federal control. You dig in the trenches, kind of. Right. All right, what do you make of the suspicions of the so-called birthers that Obama was not born in the United States and therefore is not legally president? Well, I blame partly Obama for this because it, there hasn't really been full disclosure on this, uh, and so it has left this issue simmering. Um, look, I think the circumstantial evidence seems to be that Obama was born in Hawaii. The reason for that is that, that in 1961, in August, when Obama was born, there was a notice of his birth in two Hawaiian newspapers, including the Honolulu Sunday Advertiser. So, gee, I don't think someone was making a plot 50 years ago. Uh, so, uh, on the weight of it, I think the likelihood is that he was born in Hawaii. But the issue doesn't go away because the full uh, disclosure hasn't occurred. Now, all that being said, this is not something I focus on in my book. I'm not, I don't care about where Obama was born. I'm, I care about where he got his ideas, his values. Uh, and so I explore the relationship with his father uh, and his father's socialist, but also more broadly anti-colonialist ideology. Again, the name of the book, The Roots of Obama's Rage. Dinesh D'Souza, thanks so much for speaking with us here at Newsmax, and good luck with that book. Thank you very much. And thank you for watching Newsmax TV.